Hello everybody. I am coming to you today under less than ideal circumstances, unfortunately. If you follow the community page of my channel, you probably already know what's going on. Over the weekend, I was out herping with Greg from Greg's Turtle Haven, and uh, we were snorkeling for turtles along a creek at a public park, and uh, unfortunately, someone found where we had stashed our bags containing our phones, wallets, keys, camera equipment, etc., and took basically everything we own. We were taking precautions to prevent this from happening by moving our bags as we went up the creek, but I think whoever took our stuff noticed what we were doing and were able to watch us, and uh, they were able to find where we were hiding our stuff. So in that moment, the person that took our bags took effectively me and Greg's means of living. Um, Greg is a professional photographer and YouTube creator just like myself, and we both lost the tools that allow us to basically make a living when they took our backpacks. Not only did I lose a lot of camera equipment, but I also lost a lot of footage, um, spe specifically GoPro footage that I had filmed from my last couple of out-of-state trips to Missouri and to Colorado. I was able to save a lot of my footage from the last couple months just by having it backed up to the cloud, but unfortunately I didn't have everything edited and backed up yet, so a lot of the flip clips from my recent trips are going to be lost, unfortunately. There is still hope that my stuff could turn up, but I'm not going to count on it. I'm assuming that whoever took that stuff knew what they were doing and pawned it off immediately. That being said, it's been a couple of days since the incident. I'm recording this on my new iPhone that uh, thankfully was covered by insurance, so I didn't have to pay full price to replace this. But as far as I know, none of my camera gear is insured, um, which is obviously a mistake. But this is one of those things that you kind of don't ever think is going to happen to you until it does. So lesson learned in that department, I'm going to be exponentially more careful with my belongings going forward, but that doesn't exactly help my current situation. Greg and I both probably lost somewhere between three and $7,000 worth of equipment in our bags. Not only did I have my camera, GoPro, all my camera lenses, flashes, etc., my iPhone, uh, my wallet, my car keys, I had a bunch of stuff in that bag that I do use and I carry with me normally, but I also had a bunch of stuff in there that I took on my Colorado trip that I don't normally keep on my person, such as my headphones that I use to edit my videos, along with a lot of other less expensive but still, you know, it adds up type stuff like my flashlights. Uh, generally, I use cheap flashlights with 18650 batteries, but 18650 batteries are very expensive, so when someone takes all of your 18650s, that's like $70 worth of batteries. So if you follow my community tab, you might have noticed that I started a Patreon. Um, and the main purpose for this was to kind of give you guys a way to help me out where you get something in return. So it's not just a direct donation. Um, I do intend to keep the Patreon open as long as people are interested in it and provide kind of like some behind the scenes type footage and some exclusive content that I'll only upload there. That being said, all the good stuff is going to continue to be uploaded on the main channel but I'm gonna upload like behind the scenes type stuff and do some question answer type things on there. So I'm sure most of you watching know how Patreon works. If that's something you're interested in, the link will be in the description of this video and a lot of the videos going forward. Um, I really appreciate everyone who has helped and donated so far. Um, it means more than I can express to you guys that there are people out there willing to help me. That being said, a lot of the stuff that was stolen and a lot of the really expensive stuff is camera equipment. And uh, for the most part, I don't use that stuff as directly with my YouTube content creation as I do with my recreational photography. And, but I do use a lot of that stuff in my thumbnails, etc. So those photos are very important, not only to me, but to my content as a whole. Because the GoPro footage is lost, I'm probably going to have some kind of weird gaps in my content over the course of the next few videos. Um, hopefully I'll be able to patch it together so it's not too weird, but if there is some weird jumping around that seems atypical from what you normally see from me. It's probably because I have a lot of GoPro footage that I was counting on being in the videos that's now not going to be uh, because it's on my stolen memory card. Um, I just bought a big memory card for the GoPro so that I can continue to film uh, without having to worry about running out of memory. And my GoPro batteries were in there along with my brand new GoPro charger that I bought so that I could... Anyways, you get the gist. I lost a lot of stuff and it really sucks, but I'm going to keep my chin up it's late spring here in Georgia. It's a great time to be herping. Uh, I don't have a driver's license currently, so I'm going to be attempting to herp without a driver's license or credit card. 
uh, until those things get replaced. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to stick kind of local for the next at least week or so until I can get my essential licenses and cards and stuff that was stolen with my wallet replaced. But anyways, to the point. Um, I really apologize for any lapses in my content quality over the next couple weeks. It's going to be a rough time for me um, between the amount of editing. I was just, it's so devastating to lose the footage more than anything because I was so excited about a couple of these videos, the Colorado video especially. I've been really unorganized about my GoPro footage, so I have a lot of videos that are going to be partially complete um, because I imported random flip clips because I just wanted to see how they looked. And... Uh, Thankfully, I did because I will now be able to include at least some of those in my videos. But either way, you guys get the gist. Um, I don't intend this to be just a long video of me ranting. Um, once again, I'm super thankful for everyone's support. Even if you're just commenting, expressing your support, it means the world to me. And I promise I'm going to try to continue to upload quality videos uh, to the best of my ability over the next couple weeks. So anyways, let's get into this video. Um, I do know I lost a couple of flip clips from this day, but hopefully it, I think it's just gonna be like one or two things. Um, and then the rest of the video should flow pretty smoothly. So let's get into it. By the way, this was recorded back in mid to late April, I think, so. Good morning, everybody. It is a lovely Saturday morning here in the greater Atlanta area. And uh, it's nice and cool today. The high is going to be around 68, 69, maybe even 70 degrees. Um, but it's going to be mostly cloudy all day. So I'm going to take advantage of this because it is getting kind of late in the year and soon temperatures are going to start consistently getting a lot warmer, uh, which means that hiking and flipping is not as productive for snakes. So anyways, I'm going to get out and flip some rocks today. I'm going to run the GoPro and hopefully get some flip clips uh, if I do find anything. So anyways, I'm going to get after it and I'll keep you guys updated. All right, with this crusty little Tantilla, we are on the board. Saw a couple of these yesterday. It's still nice and cool, so he's a little bit slow moving and lethargic, but a little Southeastern Crown Snake to start the day. I'll put him back and keep flipping. Well, after nearly ripping my finger off with that last flip, that is awesome. I wonder if that's the same one I found earlier in the spring. Kind of has the same look to it. Well, I still feel like I'm gonna throw up from smashing my finger, but I mean, I got the flip clip. After comparing markings, this is the same snake I found back in March. He's got a weird band. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, that weird band right there I was able to compare, but either way, really awesome. He's moved a little bit, not too far, um, but I was really not expecting to get a recapture on this guy. That's really cool. So this was definitely my main goal today, but I was really hoping to find some different areas uh, kind of like this with this nice rock to flip for these guys. Uh, but I figured I'd start here and see if there were any new snakes hanging out. Uh, this guy's a recapture, like I said, but really cool to see him under a different rock. And I mean, only a few feet from where I found him last time, but cool to see that he moved a little bit. I'm never, it's always surprising to me to find recaptures under different pieces of cover for some reason. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to put him back and see if I can get another one. All right, little guy, I'm gonna put you under the rock next to the one you were under because I wanna flip the one next to the one you were under on the other side. All right, there's Tantilla number two. Definitely a little bit nicer than the first one. A lot bigger too, good size one. Pretty little face on that guy. All right, well the Tantilla are up, so I'm gonna put him back and uh, keep flipping. Here's the first worm snake of the day. Probably will not be the last, but kind of neat. It's always weird to me how these guys can exist in similar habitat with Tantilla because they're more or less the same snake. They look almost identical, except for one has the crown, obviously, and this guy does not. Um, I guess they have dietary differences, though, probably, that allow them to coexist in the same habitat without competing one another. Either way, pretty cool. We'll open it back. Well, there's our first in hand ring neck of the day. Little bitty guy in this old wad of plastic here. So we'll just put him back. Here's another one of these little guys at my main little area. I ran out of rocks, so I'm kind of making my way up into a little bit different habitats, not as rocky. 
but we did find one nice rock here and underneath it was this guy there's another nice big red salamander these guys have been everywhere lately very cool i think i've seen these here before one of the first times i came so we'll just put them back I missed the flip on this guy because it's just a random rock on the side of the road, but I figured I'd recreate it. Boom. Eastern king snake. Just chilling. This is my third king snake from this area and definitely the darkest one. Um, all the others I've seen have looked like pretty typical eastern kings. This guy looks like he's got a little black king in him. Um, a little rough around the edges too. Needs a shed. And it looks like we came a couple days too early. It looks like he'll be shedding here very soon. So either way, really cool. Glad we got one of these today. I was hoping we would. And uh, even cooler to just kind of find it under this little jumble of rocks on the side of this road. Look at this guy. So he actually started shedding in my hand. If you, uh, if you pick a snake up and their skin starts coming off like this guy's, generally that means they're ready to shed. And uh, sure enough, he's crawling right out of it, which is always really cool to see. So we are gonna get to see this guy with fresh skin, which is awesome, so. Well, that guy just pulled up and wanted to keep the snake. <laughs> Anyways, now that he's freshly shed, I'll take a couple pictures, put him back, and uh, keep harping, see what else can turn out. But Eastern King and Scarlet King today, not bad at all. Good morning, everybody. It's actually not morning, it's about mid-afternoon at this point. But uh, today's been really cool. The last couple of days have been really cool, um, even getting down into the high 30s at night. So I haven't been out as much as I have recently. So I'm probably just gonna pick this video up here. Um, it's been really unproductive this week because of the temperatures, I think. But anyways, today's gonna be a bit warmer. So I'm out here in a new spot that I've never been to. Uh, looks like a pretty awesome forest area. I'm not sure how conducive it's gonna be to snakes, but we're gonna find out. But anyways, the goal for today is to find a eastern king snake in this county. Be a new county for me. But yeah, the weather for the last 10 days or so has just been pretty disappointing all around. It's been, I mean, it feels like it's been weeks since we've had a good rain. Uh, and it, it really has. We've had a few intermittent showers, but it's really been weeks since we've had any good measurable precipitation. And it's definitely starting to affect the herping. Um, so... It's been a little bit harder to get motivated to get out with the uh, conditions, but I have been doing a lot of editing. There's a lot of videos in the hopper getting ready to come out, so by the time this comes out, y'all have seen all those. But anyways, I'm looking forward to hitting this habitat today. It's a little bit nicer today than it has been, so hopefully we'll be able to turn up at least a few things. Very nice. Got some AC. We're gonna dig through. If there's anybody hanging out. This was the main reason I wanted to come here as I saw all this stuff on satellite. Thought it looked pretty good. Which it does. Oh, King, 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 look! Holy crap! That was entirely too easy. Holy crap. Second board I flipped and I got it on film too. Look at this guy. That is amazing. Absolutely beautiful adult Eastern King Snake. Right outside of Atlanta, basically in Atlanta. We haven't even really started getting into the good stuff yet. And there's just piles of boards here. Well, that more than makes my day right there. Absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately in shed, but you can just tell the snake is incredible. Beautiful chains. Nice relatively thick banding. It's big. Nice adult male. Just really awesome all the way around. First snake I found here, too. And on my first visit. I mean, it's very rare that you find a snake that looks this stunning in shed. I mean, look at the scales. Look at the way that's reflecting light. That is just unreal. Absolutely insane. What a snake. 
well, on that note, I guess I'm going to head to a different area and try to find kings in multiple counties today. I might go flip my mud snake stuff, actually, and see if there's any anything hanging out there in the swamp. Really awesome. I'm going to walk around here a little bit longer and see if I turn up anything else, but if not, I mean, day's made right there. Oh, these are placed perfectly. There's another one right there. This spot is even better looking than I was hoping. Honestly, with how good this looks, I'm kind of surprised there's only been one king snake in it. So far. I mean, jeez. Rat snake, I think. Yep. that guy nice big rat snake at the bottom of the pile not too shabby for how urban this area is one nice little trash pile and we've got a nice adult rat a nice adult king does not get much better than that all right put this guy back go on See what this thing is. Today's one of those days where it's just cool enough that it feels nice for reptiles to be sitting out in the sun, like this guy's doing. Nice little five line skink. I've seen quite a few of these around here today. This guy is just chilling though, look at that. Doesn't seem to be too bothered that I'm checking him out. Oh, there he goes. There's a real nice looking rock right there. I could definitely see some kind of snake being under it. And I would not be shocked if there was a baby king. Um, they like to hang out under rocks next to water like this. Nobody today. Pretty good looking though. Look at these guys. It's pretty cool. We've got a red ear slider, which is non-native. That's the one in the back there with the red ear. And then we've got yellow bellied sliders, which are native. Kind of cool to see them hanging out together. Um, but it's not really good because the, uh, the red eared sliders will start breeding with the yellow bellied sliders because they are the same species, just subspecies. Um, and it'll kind of taint the genes of the native uh, subspecies, which is unfortunate, but either way, it's a cool side-by-side -side comparison. You can see how different they look, red ears versus yellow bellies. And there are an absolute ton of turtles over there. It looks like there's a lot of cooters hanging out over there based on how much bigger those are. They get a lot bigger than sliders, but I'll see if I can get a little bit closer to these guys. So this is mostly cooters. It's a big cooter right there, I think. Most of those are cooters also. A whole lot of turtles in this pond. It's definitely a good sign that there's probably a good king snake population here. There's this many turtles. They love to eat turtle eggs. Just to show you how dry it is here. March is supposed to be our wettest month of the year generally, but almost every month in Georgia is wet. Uh, it's not a dry state. And this little swampy area right here that clearly was holding water relatively recently is completely dry. Not good. But luckily there is some rain in the forecast later this week and hopefully a lot of it, so we definitely need it. Even just since I was here last couple weeks ago, this has grown up a ton. These arrowheads came out of nowhere. Frog, little, little bronze frog. It's not a mud snake, but it's a herp. It feels like the perfect temperature to flip a mud snake to me today, but the water level is just so low. I mean, you can see the underneath, barely even wet. Um, but I mean, I guess, oh, there's a brown snake. That's the first snake I flipped under one of these. Awesome. You see there's a, 
Not much moisture under there though. Big wolf spider. Got a nice handsome brown snake. Well, it isn't a mud snake. I'm actually just happy to see these mats producing something really cool. Um, I guess this is only the third time I've flipped them since I put them out, but normally they're mostly underwater, so I wouldn't really expect to get anything under them but mud snakes. But since it's so dry, I guess this guy wandered under there. But we'll put him back. So I flipped this log, and underneath it were tons of leeches. This is maybe half of the ones that were under there. There's just tons of them crazy i don't really ever see these guys in numbers like this out here i mean i'll see them occasionally you'll see them look at that one attached to me but they're harmless you don't they aren't i don't think they're parasitic towards people they'll grab onto you if you pick them up but i've never actually been walking around out here and had one of these attached to me so either way kind of cool i'll put them back under their log you don't look particularly healthy Either that or you're just young. Maybe a little bit of both. Okay, there's a squirrel now. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> All right, then. Well, it wasn't a terrible day. We got our king snake in a new county, which was the main thing I was hoping for. But anyways, I'm probably gonna wrap this video up here. If I don't see anything else, I'm walking back to the car currently. And if I see something, I'll let you guys know. And if not, I'm probably going to wrap it up. You see, just, I mean, this is supposed to be a puddle. Crusty dry, like I'm in the desert. Luckily, there's supposed to be a lot of rain coming in tonight. Whether or not that'll actually happen is yet to be determined, but hopefully it does. This drought has been a long time in the making, but, uh... Out here on the East Coast, it takes a little bit longer for the effects of a drought like this to start setting in. And uh, they've started setting in at this point. And it is definitely making the herping a little bit wonky. But anyways, I'm going to make my way back to the car. If I see anything else, I will let you guys know. And if not, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. What is this guy doing? This is a pileated woodpecker. Real close to the ground. Definitely not the type of place you'd normally see one. But you also don't normally get to see them up this close, so that's awesome. I heard something rustling over here, and I assumed it was probably going to be a squirrel. But nope. Whoa. He is right there. All right, guys, I'm back at the house now. I'm gonna do a quick afternoon flip here today. Just see if any more snakes, just a little ground skink, see if any more snakes turn up. Look at how dry it is under here, though. Normally, this particle board is just absolutely the, the most moisture insulating. You see, this one's pretty damp, but it holds a lot of moisture. Just to show you how dry it is when that stuff's drying out. Fire ants are under here and happy. Okay. Oh, nice. Big rat snake. That is the first snake of any size or quality I've flipped under these pieces this year. Pretty cool. These guys are fairly common here at the house. I see a couple each year. Uh, this guy looks like he's going into a shed cycle, which most of the time when I find him under my cover, they are going into a shed cycle or in a shed cycle. You can see this guy's eyes are just starting to kind of cloud up a little bit. But very cool. I'm just going to pull this guy out real quick, and then I'll let him crawl back under. Anyways, pretty handsome looking. Nice white highlights between the bands. Nice adult rat snake. Or small adult rat snake. He's not too big decent size all right buddy i'll probably see him a couple more times gave me a little love bite there at the end i'll probably see him a couple more times before he leaves these pieces have had a worm snake hanging out recently i expect he'll probably still be here today under one of them yep 
Sure enough. There he is. He's going in the shed too, so we'll just leave him alone. A lot of snakes are in shed right now. It's just the time of year. Apparently earth snakes are the only snakes that are ever going to colonize this piece of tin. I only see that one today. But we've had multiple, multiple earth snake flips under here so far this year. These guys are so patternless, it would be virtually impossible to tell if this is one we've caught before, but I'd say it's a pretty good chance that it is. Either way, cute little snake, we'll put him back. Last time I flipped this, our resident king snake friend was hanging out underneath it, so let's see if there's anybody today. Sure enough, there he is. Once again, going in the shed, it looks like. Anyways, I'm just gonna leave him right there and lower this back. Definitely looks like he is going back in the shed though, so I'll try to leave him alone as much as possible. Got a couple of tiger beetles under this piece. Pretty cool. I don't flip these guys very much, if ever. I wonder if they're under here eating these ants. Really cool looking little beetles. Alright, we'll leave them to it. Oh, that's nice. Oh my goodness. There we go. I was not expecting that. This is nice and warm though. Two king snakes today. Oh yeah. I think this is a snake we've seen a couple of times before also, but I don't see this one as much as I've seen that other one. Really cool. I'm glad she's using this cover too. I put this out specifically for king snakes. And uh, super awesome to see them using it. Very cool. I'm going to pull her out and get some photos. That is insane. Three king snakes total today. Two here at the house. I, don't, I can't even remember the last day I flipped two king snakes here at home. That is awesome. I'm not, I'm not sure I've seen this snake before. I want to say I have. I mean, she's got that really awesome patterning on the sides. And I know I've seen one similar. But this one just looks a little different. It's definitely a little girl. Doing a little bit of cloacal bleeding there. Awesome. This is such a good looking snake. I think she had babies last year uh, when I caught her in April of last year. If this is the same snake, which I think it is. I would think if there's multiple snakes here with this look, um, I would know it. And I don't think I've ever seen another one with this look to it. Really cool. I gotta go grab my camera from the house to take pictures real quick, but what a beautiful snake. I'm also gonna wash that mud off her face. I do think this is that female after a little bit of a closer look. The same one, I, I see her once a year, maybe, if that. Definitely not as often as I see some of the snakes that live around here. But what I've noticed with king snakes is it seems like they have a matriarchal uh, distribution where they have one female that lives in an area. She doesn't go very far. And then you get a lot of different males that filter in in that area to breed with her um, and I guess fight over breeding with her and in this little area where I live she's the matriarch it seems like I don't see other big female kings and I mean that is a fairly fairly decent sized female females are much smaller than the males well doesn't get too much better than that Three king snakes today, including one in a new county. And I'd say that's especially good considering the drought we're in and that these snakes become much easier to find in the vicinity of rain events. So I'm gonna walk this girl back down to her board before she finds a hole and disappears into it up here by the house. Um, I have caught her just over there on the other side of the pond, right up against the, uh, the backyard, basically. And I've also caught her all the way down there by the creek before, so. I want to say it was around this time last year that I caught her also, maybe even pretty close to the same date. I'll have to double check on that. But either way, really nice king snake. 
All right, guys, well, on that note, I am actually going to wrap this video up here. Super great way to end the video with that beautiful female king snake. Uh, that's her board right down there. I'm really hoping that she'll hang out under there for a while. Uh, there's a bunch of fire ants under there right now, which is not good timing normally. I don't get too worried about fire ants, but I definitely don't want them hanging out under there with that king. But anyways, hopefully a male will end up under that board too at some point along with her. Um, that's the, the ideal situation and we'll get to see the male and her. And hopefully she'll breed again this year and make more baby king snakes. I would not be surprised if that snake is the mother of the snake that we find under the board up there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Really great day of herping. Lots of king snakes in this video. Tis the season and uh, I'm going to get back to it later this week. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I uh, will see you guys in the next episode.